Dentistry has changed dramatically in the last few decades and continues to change daily. The instruments, materials, procedures and techniques we use are constantly evolving. But one thing will always remain constant, the critical importance of predictable tissue management. Nearly all procedures, from impressions for indirect restorations to successful bonding techniques, depend upon adequate control of fluids and the surrounding tissues. For example, most failures of indirect restorations can be attributed to poor marginal fit caused by inadequate reproduction of marginal detail in the impression. In the case of this patient, two molars were fabricated from impressions made by two different dentists. A well-trained technician fabricated both crowns, but could not improve on the poor impression. There are four basic requirements which must be met in order to assure good tissue management. First. Soft tissue covering subgingival margins and axial walls must be retracted horizontally to provide space for a sufficient amount of impression material. Second, tissue at the gingival margins must be displaced vertically to expose the margin. Third, all hemorrhaging must be arrested. And fourth, all hard and soft tissue to be reproduced in the impression must be clean and dry. During this presentation, we'll demonstrate a system which consistently achieves a clean, dry field not only for taking impressions, but also for bonding procedures. This system incorporates the use of three alternate materials. The coagulative hemostatic, either viscostat or astringent, the dento infuser tip, and the ultrapack knitted retraction cord. Let's follow a clinical case for the infusion technique of tissue management prior to making an impression. To begin, the tooth is prepared in the normal manner, prepping is complete, and as expected, excess blood and sulcular fluid are present. Next, a unit dose quantity of the hemostatic solution is prepared. This is accomplished by using a 1.2 milliliter unit dose syringe, or by attaching a 1.2 milliliter syringe to the indispense, and filling with viscostat, astringent, or astringent X. Astringent is a 15.5% ferric sulfate solution and was Ultradent's first hemostatic agent. Viscostat is a new and improved version of astringent. It's a 20% ferric sulfate coagulative hemostatic gel with binders and coating agents to make it kinder to tissues. Viscostat is also more viscous which makes it easier to control. Ultradent also offers Viscostat Winter Mint a mint flavored version of the original Viscostat formula that offers an improved taste for the patient. Astringent X is a more potent formulation and is used when a stronger hemostatic is required or where attaining a certain quality of hemostasis may be more challenging. It's not as kind to tissues as Viscostat and Astringent but is kinder than other iron subsulfate solutions. However, diluted Astringent X does not equal Viscostat or Astringent. Viscostat utilizes binding and coating agents that tie up the hydronium ion and minimize the acidic effect. In tests, smear plugs have been shown to remain intact after eight minutes of exposure. A study at Indiana University made the following conclusions. Application of the hemostatic materials tested did not significantly affect the process of healing, although Viscostat was the only solution that did not delay the early stages of healing. Viscostat had the most favorable effects on the process of wound healing. Between 0.3 to 0.5 milliliters of solution is usually adequate for one preparation. A dental infuser tip is now attached to the syringe. To ensure a smooth and consistent delivery of Viscostat, the syringe should be held as shown here, using the palm of the hand rather than the thumb to depress the plunger. Check for evenness of flow before dispensing intraorally. Because Viscostat, Astringent, and Astringent X act so quickly to coagulate blood in the sulcus, they may prematurely tie up with blood-forming coagulum before reaching the capillary openings. Then, when the superficial coagulum is rinsed away, the cut surface will again begin to bleed. The Dento Infuser was developed by Ultradent to permit the infusion of the hemostatic solution into the cut capillaries. The hemostatic solution is rubbed firmly against the bleeding, cut tissues until bleeding stops. The rubbing motion also wipes off excess coagulum, making it even with the cut tissue surface. Depending on the patient's periodontal and systemic health, hemostasis may be obtained in as little as two to three passes around the sulcus or up to as many as 20 or 30. Hemostasis is realized when the new coagulum stops forming. 
To test for completeness of hemostasis, the sulcus is cleaned with a firm air water spray. Remember, if bleeding is the tissue's response to a firm air water spray, then bleeding will probably also occur during placement of the impression material. Therefore, if bleeding occurs, more viscostat should be burnished firmly against the area. Once again, hemostasis is tested with a firm air water spray. If no bleeding occurs, hemostasis has been achieved and we're ready to pack the cord. Ultradense 100% cotton cords are knitted into long chains of microscopic interlocking loops. At first glance, these knitted cords may appear too large. However, the interthread space of the knit cord allows for easier compression and packing and can carry a considerable quantity of hemostatic retraction solution in comparison with braided or twisted cords. Watch what happens when the ordinary braided cord is pushed down. It springs back up and returns to its original shape. But when the ultra-pack cord is pressed down, it stays. Ultra-pack cords come in six convenient sizes. The cord size selected should be large enough to compensate for the compression of packing. However, tissue firmness and friability, as well as the amount of space desired, may require using different sizes. In general, knitted cords are most easily placed with a thin packing instrument. Ultradent offers serrated packers and the large and small slide packers. An ultra-pack knitted cord is soaked in viscostat and then packed into place. After packing, rinse the area. The cords need to be left in place for only one to three minutes, rather than the customary 10 to 15 with other materials. Retraction is rapid because hemostasis has already been achieved. No blood is present to dilute the retraction agent in the cord. Remove the cord and once again clean the area and test for completeness of hemostasis with a firm air water spray before the impression material is mixed. Prep quick can be flowed over the preparation to remove the smear layer, reduce surface tension, and give better accuracy in the impression. Sometimes, the gingival tissue appears dark after the infusion process. This is due to iron precipitated coagulum in the tissues. This discoloration dissipates within 24 to 48 hours after the temporary is placed. Making an accurate impression the first time is expected if all the margins are clean, dry, and exposed. Notice the clean, highly detailed margins that are possible to achieve using this technique. Some dentists choose to pack a cord prior to subgingival tooth preparation. Ultradense knitted cord will not entangle in diamond burrs during cutting at high speeds. Packing prior to subgingival margin extension helps protect gingival attachment. Tissue and fluid control is mandatory for other operative procedures as well. When bonding or looting of crown, the gingival tissue should be healthy. Hemorrhaging is not usually a problem, but sulcular fluid is. A plastic blue mini infuser tip loaded with viscostat is used to seal the epithelium and prevent sulcular fluid contamination. After hemostasis is obtained, it's imperative to scour the surface thoroughly. An Ultradent ICB brush or rubber cup can be used with Ultradent's Concepsis scrub for quality scouring and cleaning of the preparation. This scouring should be done prior to making the final impression and before final cementation of the completed prosthesis. If all hemostatic is not removed and the preparation is not thoroughly scoured clean, the bonding agents will not adhere to the dentin and or enamel substrate. By following good sulcular fluid management techniques, whether for impression making or restorative prosthesis bonding procedures, the integrity and longevity of the restoration is maximized. Today, the infusion technique of tissue management has become a prominent feature in dentistry and has gained clinical acclaim for its effectiveness and predictability. Additional uses for these materials are taught in Ultradense Materials and Procedures Manual. In summary, by following the techniques demonstrated in this presentation, predictable tissue management resulting in accurate impressions and quality restorations will become a routine part of your practice.